Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with Arise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. Welcome to today's episode on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast. It is our very first episode. And I am so excited to bring Kevin Kim, one of my teammates, onto the show. How fitting. Um, it's, I don't know, when I think about first guests, like you're the first one I thought of. And in this podcast, we're going to be talking about real estate, mortgages, and finances in Vancouver. And the target people who I want to reach out to are Asian Canadians. My name is John Lee, mortgage broker with Arise Mortgage. And Kevin, thank you. And welcome to our very first show. Hey, John, thanks for having me. And it is my honor to be the first guest for your show. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, I have some icebreaker questions just to kind of lighten the mood and also um, for people to get to know you as well. Mm -hmm. So I have a series of questions and they're really fast. First one, very simple. When you go to any bubble tea shop, Oh man. Hey, bubble tea shop, what is your order? And be specific too. You got to tell me about the ice level and the ice <laughs> and, and the sugar level. <laughs> I love it. This is very Asian um, type of question. I love it. I love it. So probably I would go to, um, I don't like the chain or like franchise bubble tea stores. I love like locals trying out new things. And at the same time, even though I am Asian, I'm Korean, which means uh, I'm not really like deep into the bubble tea, but I do have one good drink. I I really enjoy taro slush with pearl. Oh yeah, seventy five percent sugar, uh, and it's a slush, but no ice level. But ever since I taste the first bubble tea, I've been drinking taro slush for my life. So probably like and, twenty years. And are you really picky on the taro? Do you have to have like the fresh taro? Or yes, yes. Oh, I okay. actually love powder. <laughs> everybody talk about like oh you need to get the fresh taros and that's better but you know what maybe because i actually first tried out the very conventional style uh or westernized bubble tea i don't know like i just just keep drinking that the purple uh very artificial col color and the taste but i can't stop it that's my go-to nice nice okay and then this is a series of this or that okay mm -hmm. so you just let me know sushi or dim sum sushi Ramen or pho? Oh man, I'll go with pho. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bubble tea or matcha latte? Oh, definitely bubble tea. This one, uh, okay, this one's a good one. Bamboo forest or cherry blossom trees? Wow. I'm not a tree person, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go with the bamboo trees. <laughs> um, oh, this one is probably obvious. But maybe we get a different answer from you. Korean barbecue or hot pot? Okay, so I have a clear answer for this. So um, I'll have to go with the hot pot, even though I haven't tried hot pot in my life yet. Because um, over the last three years, I've been having Korean barbecue probably more than 100 times. I can <laughs> guarantee. Like I can I can say I've tried enough. So I, I love Korean food, Korean barbecue. It's my cultural and family food, but I'll have to go with the hot pot for this okay, time. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Peking duck or pad thai? Oh, Peking duck. Peking I duck. love oh, it. Yeah. It is yummy. It's the best dish. Yes, yes. This one I actually really want to know. J-pop or K-pop? Oh, you know what? Uh, for my probably like teenagers and 20s, I loved J-pop. Like um, Japanese rocks, uh, music, and animation movies. But... Ever since I got married and get into like busy life, I didn't really have time to catch up everything. Mm -hmm. But Korean uh, culture, like K music and K pop, got really like heat up. Yeah. Um. But I was too, you know, busy to catch up the trend, and then I've been like lefting over. I mean, like, okay, I don't really know about K pop anymore. So um, I'll have to go with the K pop for now, just to well, follow the trend. But uh, trust me, I'm not the right person or perfect person to talk about the K <laughs> culture. <laughs> Uh, I got two more. Gyoza or spring rolls? Ooh. I'll, I'll, I'll go with the gyoza. gyoza? I love both, but gyoza. And then last one. Oh, last one, but a very important one. It, it, for some reason, maybe it, it shows a lot of the Asian personality. Mm -hmm. Rice or noodles? Oh, rice. All, <laughs> all day, bro. Rice. 
I love noodles for rice. It's it's essential. Come on, it's yeah. like an air and water for us. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing though. Thanks for answering those questions. That was a lot of fun. And uh, now I want to get to know you more uh, as uh, on the business side and also you know, how you've been helping clients. So perhaps you can share you know, how you got into the mortgage business. You're a mortgage broker and you know, why, why did you get into it? So um, I believe like none of us, including you, myself, or probably all the mortgage workers out there, never dreamed to be a mortgage broker when we were like kid or young. Like it's not like, athletes or president or politician thing right and this is the a very professional and special and exclusive position and the job itself and the industry too that is providing a huge and massive financial support for all the canadian home buyers and owners and i used to be an accountant but i was quite good at the job itself but i was not really happy about the job because um i was always thirsty about more human interaction more client facing, uh, which ended up to getting le leaning towards more sales position. And I think I was very lucky to meet uh, one of the best mortgage broker out there in BC. Uh, I wonder who this me. is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really want to know too. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and because of my experience with my uh, mortgage broker for my first home, um, it actually kind of left me a great impressions that, wow, like there is a professional who's doing one or two products or one or two, let's say, uh, a work itself, but being really good at it and then doing so well. Um, but over the last five years or six years of working as an accountant, um, I was okay. I was comfortable and I was supporting my family. Nothing wrong. But um, I had a moment that my health was kind of having an issues and it had a, a lots of time to think about what I'm going to do for the next 30 years, 35 years. Um, so I decided to call the special mortgage broker and I had a conversation with him and then he was sharing a lot of pro and cons about being mortgage broker, but he was very, very transparent and I kind of like understood. And then I wanted to kind of have a deep dive um, um, thought about it. Um, but I also reach out to so many different professions, including realtors, lawyers, even like RMT professionals. So my spectrum was wide open. I was trying out, asking everything. But not many people are super happy about what they're doing. Like I'm sure uh, the listeners are also agree to it, but there's no perfect job. There's no perfect world. But um, I was like listening more about their cons compared to the pros. So pros more like money or time but the cons is horrible it's just something that i cannot sacrifice which was family so i what, decided what's to... the worst con that you you heard and you're like oh i have to really stay away from this man so i don't want to kind of pinpoint out uh, <laughs> the profession and industry because um you know obvious reason but uh one of the horrifying things that i've been heard was you might have to work over the weekend oh, and i was like no it's not might it's must <laughs> so i don't want to name it but there's a professional who's working tirelessly all day long to make the um, to file going over the weekend. So that was like something that I cannot, I cannot handle it mm -hmm. simply because I have a young family and I also want to have a good balance of my life. So um, yeah, that was something that I cannot keep up. Got it. So when you uh, got started and even during, during this time, you will focus on Koreans because you're Korean yourself. Mm -hmm. So what would you say would be the biggest pain points for Koreans purchasing in the Vancouver market right now? You know what? I, ever since I immigrated to Canada, I actually decided not to work with Korean people. Interesting. That was my, yeah, that was my like personal, let's say, philosophy that if I'm going to live in Canada and then do um, uh, work in the industry, then I'll probably not prefer to work for Korean uh, clients. Not because I don't like our people. It's more like I want to be part of a local community. Right. So I don't want to be like, oh, Kevin Kim, his last name is Kim and it must be Korean. Yeah. And I want to work with Korean. Like I, I don't want to kind of set up that wrong expectation about it. Uh, what I'm trying to do is, oh, I found a great mortgage broker, but he's actually Korean. And it, it's like, I want to have that coming the next week. So um, that was not my intention, but it turns out to be 75% of my client is Korean people. And I can 
I can pick and choose my client. But what I'm trying to say is, I think I was at the right moment and right timing for Korean people who's seeking more about um, remote and professional advice for mortgages and home buying. And there's a lot of great Korean mortgage broker out there in the market, but still the market was thirsty about, oh, we need somebody to talk about mortgages. And uh, I was able to find my niche market in the online community. And probably I was the energetic young version of a mortgage broker, or like a new mortgage broker coming in. So um, I was purely lucky, I guess. I'm not trying to be humble, but John, like you are the witness. Like we were surprised when we got the first call, first client, lots of sales coming in. Like, yes, we put in a lot of works, but we were blessed. And yeah. it was very fortunate to find those clients. It was also awesome. during COVID time too. Exactly. When, when we thought, like, I was just looking at my savings during that time. I was like, man, there's no open house. Hmm. Like nobody were allowed to go outside. And like, yep, I don't know. Are we done? Like, exactly. just, I have to uh, become an Uber driver or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also consider that too. Uh, a lot of friends were asking, like, where do you find your client and jobs? I'm like, I can't. Because the yeah. lockdown and everybody was too afraid about how the economy will go. And yeah, that was a tough moment. But So what would be the um, typical situation for your clients then that you're able to help them? Mm. So for the very first and the second years, um, I think it's very obvious to find or meet a lot of first-time home buyers, simply because a lot of clients are more comfortable to talk about their mortgages with somebody who's going through the same process. So I purchased my home um, four or five years prior to being a mortgage broker. So I kind of had that uh, fresh experience about what kind of stuff that is going over and what's frustrating, what's clear. Um, I think it's time to reveal the, uh, the special mortgage broker to the listeners, but um, Thankfully, I met you, John, and you were my first mortgage worker, and obviously first and the last mortgage worker, I guess. But um, <laughs> yeah, you you stole my client. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of the toughest clients yeah. from your book. Yes. <laughs> but uh, just going back to the point, um, I think um, I met a lot of first-time home buyers and young family. And back then, I had my son was one years old, so um, that was a great point that I could connect with the client saying, Hey, like I I've been through, I bought my first home, very similar situation, or you are even better in the situation. Let's do it. Um, but after one or two years later, um, my portfolio has been diversified into a BE lender and the private lender client, um, because, um, because of my accounting background, I was able to find and talk to the client who's running the business, more focusing on cash flow, not the tax return itself. And at the same time, the private market was very hot, not because of the rate, not because of the uh, aggressive loan to value and stuff, but I found out a lot of clients had a wrong expectation or strategies to get into the market. And back then, there's no subject to financing or subject to anything. There's no subject offer all the way. So if they screw up, then they have to go with the alternate. And because of that reason, I had so many unfortunate or planned out private clients that really kind of expand my business book. And then I could learn everything from the get-go, from the pile. So yeah, that was that was what I was doing for the first so For those who like don't really know about like the A lending, B lending, and then private lending, can you kind of describe how B lending and private lending would be different from your typical uh, bank? Yeah. Bank yeah, and I think a lot of brokers are also not sure about what's B and private. And even though we have license, we went through all the cores and books and everything, unless you actually done it, you don't really know. So I'm sure like majority of brokers have done the B and private, but for the clients, we never heard about it. And we don't want to know because it's kind of scary. It sounds yeah. scary, and especially for Asian people. Yeah, Asians, we're just like, even for like better grade, you go to school, you want A, right? Like, yeah, exactly. like, why do I want B? Like private, exactly. it's probably like a C, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you like, failed and, life and already. We are, we all also have that the expectations that the financing has been done in our own country, like Korea. There's no mortgage broker. Mm -hmm. Like all the financing about home is getting provided from the bank level. So okay. uh, a lot of Korean clients are not sure about the what's B and what's private. So how I describe it is it's not the tier system of financial institution, but it is the um, how they understand and analyze your income. It's just a type of lender. So a lender, um, including bank, credit unions, or monoline mortgage special lenders, 
they are more focusing on your previous history of how you make money. So tax returns or a very strong and secure salaried or guaranteed income, which is a very traditional way of getting mortgage, but there's always a limitation simply because they're looking for more um, lengths of job history or income history or even like tax return for business owners and um, self-employed who would have like less net income, obviously reason. Mm -hmm. uh, but B lenders are the are the lenders that is looking probably more focusing on the cash flow and then how you are going to make more money and how you're going to pay back. So the purpose of B lender was came up from, oh, there's a lot more people who cannot fit into the A side. Why don't we do this business for B side? But we're taking higher risk simply because we're not looking back. We're looking forward. So then we are we are happy to take the risk. So high high risk means high return for the lender. Mm -hmm. So B lenders are typically higher pricing, but for my clients and probably for majority of B clients who plan out to go with the B at the very beginning, they actually save a lot more upfront, maybe from tax or buying a property that is probably higher value than what they can get it from A, which means there's a higher potential that they can actually make more money from the return of that real estate or the the, the products that they're buying. So there's a lot of different um, concept and then understanding going in. If you well planned with B first, um, and then at same thing for the private private lenders, they take more um, higher risk client in the uh, cases, and then they want the higher return. Uh, but privates, the good things about private is they have actually less or sometimes zero conditions to get a mortgage approval. So it can be a really great plan B for your clients and, and majority of the buyers out there. But at the same time, uh, if you use it really well, um, it's it's really beneficial because if you use the private and then you have a great exit plan and within the reasonable time and you are willing to do that, you can actually save a lot more. Like, um, not sure how much time we have, but if you give, if I give you an example, let's say you need to wait two years of tax return to get a 500,000 mortgages. But instead of waiting two years, why don't we just get a mortgage from private and then you move in, instead of paying rent, you pay interest. But over the two years, if there's a market appreciation kicks in, you're not losing money. It's your home. You're holding it. Your cost of uh, living there is the cost of interest. And once your tax return is done, you can simply do refinance. So instead of waiting and getting a mortgage and buying a home in the future, you could move into the market earlier. So those are the just the simple one or two examples that why we need to be in private. But there's thousands of reasons why. And uh, I was happy to um, listen to those clients' history or stories and then kind of come up with, oh, you know what? Instead of waiting, why don't we do this yeah. and then take this way? I, I think um, your, your approach is really good because uh, for the average client, they'll just be like, no, Kevin, like um, rate the higher. I don't want even want to listen to it. But that's just one aspect of it in the whole financial plan or the whole big picture. And I think what you do well is that you actually run the numbers. You mentioned about, okay, you don't have to pay rent anymore. Like that's just going to be a saving. And you kind of just break it down. And if you are able to show that the numbers actually work, what I tell you and also other clients, numbers don't lie. Like mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like we don't make this up. We can't just yeah. uh, BS about it and, and try to sell you something. If the numbers do work, um, there's no reason why you shouldn't go ahead with it. Um, so no, thank you for sharing. And I think, um, no, this is definitely like, uh, still solutions available, especially now with like rates much higher. It is more difficult to be approved, but, um, I, I want to hear a successful story. So mm -hmm. if you can share one or two up to you, um, stories that, um, situations that you have used alternative lending, so B lending or private lending to help a client, um, do you, can you share that with us? Yeah, of course. And I love uh, what you just told. Like numbers don't lie. I mean, like everybody used this phrase, but how? And then how they implicate to to talk to the client. First of all, it really has to make sense to me first. Like yeah. we are working for the client, not for the lender. And obviously, we're working with the lenders to help the client, but really have to make sense to us. That means two, probably two or three options for me. Number one, is that something that I've done? That's a very... I'll, I'll say very transparent and fastest way to figure out whether this makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. So I actually purchased my second home with B lender. 
And there were many reasons why, but the major reason was number one, uh, my cash flow was way better than my tax return. And number two, I didn't want to wait until my two years of full tax return is done because that was that was the time that market was really hot. But at the same time, I needed a bigger home for my family. So when I sold my first home, which I purchased with you, John, um, that was the moment that, oh, my family is growing. We need one more bedroom. And then we need, uh, I want to move to um, some locations that uh, we always dreamed about and that we found the perfect home. And that was the most or the best motivations to go with the viewer private. It's it got to be the the reason from your family and the property. You need to have a good property to go ahead with this. Because financially it will cost you more. But what's your return means probably 70% of the return is coming from the property itself. The the time that you can enjoy the property earlier or faster or whatever the reason is, like that's got to be the very first uh priority to make sure. So for me, I've done my B and I bought my property with the B lender. And then I was questioning myself, like, wow, like, is this really working? I know I helped the client in this way, but for me, let's just give it a try. Get and pick myself. And after one year of staying in B, which means I bought the property one year earlier, right? the amount of happiness and the life changing over the first year in that, in the home was just amazing, massive. My son loves the backyard. My wife loves the new kitchen. I love my um, designated office. Everybody is just, wow, like we're so grateful. That and, we and that's actually, you would say that's part of your appreciation too. Like Absolutely. lots of people, they go capital gain. And it's like, oh, I bought my property at this price and mm -hmm. what's the market price. But there's also a lot of things that you can't measure. And that is the actual satisfaction because you're actually living in it and you're building and growing your family, building memories in this place. Exactly. I think it's because I went through this B lending and buying a property for, for my family. Um, if you haven't used, well, as a mortgage broker, if you haven't used it, you would not kind of know what's the other factors beyond the financing itself. And second of all, for the B itself, um, because of my experience, I was able to refinance after one year, uh, which was a great strategy for a majority of my buyers because I want to make sure that B or private, they're not ending with it because everybody needs a good exit. Back to it's a definitely place. not a long term solution. It's a, a temporary one. Yeah, exactly. And and I was I was more focusing on the amortization. Like, what if you stay in the B for fifteen years, and then you got out, and then you have new thirty years of amortization with the A side? Then your principal and interest ratio will go back to the the very first, you know, I will say unfair ratio, but that will kind of like slow you down to pay off your mortgage. So my exit plan was nice and easy. I'm going to stay in one year for B, I'll refinance. I've done it for myself. Then now I'm very confident to talk to my client. Hey, Mr. Client, this is the reason why you have to go with a B. But don't worry, within one or two years, if you do this, 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 then we'll refinance. So I've, I've done tons of files for private refinance to B and uh, B to A, simply because I was so confident what to do from my own experience. Mm -hmm. And obviously, John, you don't have to go through this, um, but uh, I would highly recommend if any brokers are listening to this, try it for <laughs> yourself. Then it will be so much easier and so much transparency to talk to the clients and what's going to be really happen. Um, sorry, like I think we're just going so on instead of talking about the successful story, but that successful story yeah, for me. This is for you. Home. That's yep. that's most important. and. You're the most important client for yourself, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I was I was looking into the file so many times, so much into it. But John, you, I remember like you were helping me and yeah. you were trying to kind of like calm me down or because that was the moment. We had some moments that was like, oh, are we getting a mortgage or like what's happening? So on. And I didn't really like feel an, uh, anxiety at all. But it's like, oh, nice to kind of have a refresher of how clients are feeling. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, maybe second successful story is it could be a little bit personal, but I met a, a family who, who got declined from a lender and they came to me and say, like, Kevin, like we need a home for our two kids and we are currently separated. We want to have a, a nice home, like help us out. I, we tried, but for many, for different reasons, I also got declined from a, I told the client, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And I think this is pretty much it. Because back then, they didn't have 20% down payment, which is the bare minimum for a B lender. Uh, but because of that conversation, um, I had a probably like a very sad weekend. But 
uh, on Monday, I got a call from the client saying, Kevin, like, please don't give up. Like the client was asking me, don't give up. Instead, it's, it's not me. Yeah, you. <laughs> she was saying, please like help us. Like, tell me what to do. And that was just, just smashing my head. And I was like, what am I doing here? Like I got to work for them. So I came up with the plans and this is too confidential and personal. I can't tell you, but because of this entire process, I reached out to other side of family member to get some help. And everybody was all together to, uh, to find a property for kids. And then they are now, uh, they purchased the property and then they moved together and they are now bonded together. So, and so which route did you go? Did you end up going the B side or private yes. side? We had to go with the B side for B, this client. Okay. Yeah. And then thankfully, uh, they were able to come up with 20% down payment oh, and good. purchase the property together. But um, it was in Alberta, but look at the market in Alberta right now. It's oh, it's crazy. Crazy hot. Yep. yep. It's I, probably the only place that's uh, that actually has life in the real estate market right now. Yeah. I don't want to make any bias in the listeners, but I can guarantee probably they made 40% of returns already from the market appreciation. Wow. Amazing. And the, yeah, the, the rate was... 2.79%, I believe. Wow. That was a great B lender files. And um, yeah, so ever since that, they're so happy. They don't have to worry about anything about home anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously renewal is coming. So yeah. it's, it's kind of scary too. But uh, what I'm trying to say is successful, not just the purchasing the property, but successful in their family. So they got together. They actually live together now. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I was the counselor. The <laughs> so that's... Different hats, not only the mortgage broker, the counselor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I got to do everything. Can I share one more? I have a great story for the listener. Too. Sure. One last one. Okay. Um, I met this client in 2021. Um, she was working in Manitoba. She didn't have PR. Everything was uncertain. And I still remember the very first Zoom meeting background with her family. That was probably one of the container type home, like mobile home. Um, I think I, at some point I was like, instead of giving them a mortgage advice, I think I was giving them more like general financial and life advice. And we found out the Zoom and I was like, mm, okay, we, we're not going to have a business opportunity. But every year, the client keep reaching out to me and saying, hey, Kevin, you know, uh, we've done this. I want to have a call with you. And a year later, hey, Kevin, like I've done two things. I will have a call. So every year, they actually improve little by little. So they purchased their first home in 2024 and moved into a new property in April 30th. So basically, it took three years and a half, half years to get ready to buy a home, including getting PR, getting a nice, decent job, saving down payment, and paying off so many liabilities, including cars and unnecessary debt. So basically over the last three, three and six years, I've been connecting with them so much and then seeing them moving into the first home, man, it's just a dream. Well, that's story. super rewarding because, you know, like there's only so much that we can do. We mm -hmm. give the advice, but it's also up to the clients to actually take it and put it yeah. into action. Yeah. And most of the time they're just like, oh, it's too much work or it's too much change. And that I guess just people in general, they just like status quo and they're kind of stuck in that position. But there are a, a few that will actually take your advice. Mm -hmm. It's like going to a doctor, right? Doctors always give uh, advice and some people will take it. Most don't. Uh, and yeah, this is three years, right? Three yeah, years three of just years and six months. one step at a time. And now they're yeah. in a home. Yeah, it's not just a, one small step, like thousands of big steps, but they've oh, done no. it continuously and then they didn't give up. But like you said, um, I believe the real estate market is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. and especially living in Canada is not for everyone and living in Vancouver or Toronto, Victoria, the big market, big city, it's not for everyone. So we are the chosen one where let's say probably 1% out of the entire population itself. We're less than 1%. And in order to be in that market, we have to be not better, but I'm trying to say we have to have a good reason why we can get into that market. And come on, like we have lots of homes out there, but we still have, a lot more supply. So right. in order to be part of that wave and the end of the market itself, you have to be different from others. So do more, make more income, save more down payment. That's so obvious reason. But if you cannot do it even one, mm -hmm. buying a home is just a dream. So yeah. you got to do a lot of things. We have to remember that like these property is like minimum, maybe say one bedroom, 500,000. 
Oh, you can't just like wake up and be like, oh, I'm gonna buy something that's five hundred thousand. No, you can't. Like it, it is. There's definitely gotta be a plan to actually reach that target or goal. Mm -hmm. You could potentially do it yourself or have family help you out. But what's crazy is that people would spend so much time planning on a vacation, which is mm -hmm. probably like a one week, two weeks, twenty five hundred, five thousand dollars worth of something, and they'll spend so much time. But whereas like when they're trying to buy a five hundred thousand dollar property they're just because i don't know it, it's uh they're not putting that same effort into into it yeah but i don't question about how or why people want to buy home i think that's very like human nature type of um desire that you we always have we wanted to have a good shelter but some people are just too busy with their life their family or work uh, or even they don't really know what to prepare mm -hmm. and like you said the planning for a trip that's exciting right entertaining and that gives you like the energies to live day to day but at the same time buying a property some for some people it might feel like oh it's too big work i'm not ready but what i always encourage my client or potential clients tell is you really need to know what to prepare and for me buying a real estate is five years plan if you talk to me today and then buy a property within five years i'm not wasting time maybe if you buy property seven years like maybe I waste like an hour, but that doesn't mean that you are not, you're not working on it. Right. So I would highly recommend to reach out to your mortgage professional or realtors or any professional that you rely on to talk to them, share your idea and then see what you need to do. Cause otherwise, if you don't prepare and then find a perfect home for your life and you're not ready, it's not your home. Mm -hmm. You're just not ready and you can't buy this. But if you were slowly but surely preparing all the steps that you really have to do, then you might be able to get the property with the alternate weight, which will end up uh, buying a home with the alternate for a short term and then getting into a everybody's like the dream A side. But yeah, even getting a mortgage from a lender, it's not free. Come on, oh. people, it's not free. You got to pay 5%, <laughs> sometimes 6% nowadays. Yeah. So it's not going to be the end. The purchasing is the probably buying a home is the start. Exactly. And you always have to come up with, oh, monthly strata fees coming. Monthly mortgage is coming up. And a special levy every as well. Special levy, yes. <laughs> so every little, not little, every big changes for your purchase at home, you really have to factor in how you're going to pay back and then how you are going to, let's say, getting improved in your financials, not spending less, but making more. And how you're going to do it is the big plan. And then the plan needs to be changed, updated all the time. So I highly recommend to talk to the professional, um, know um, what you need to know, and then go from there. Cool. So for those who do want to reach out to you, what what would you say is the best way to contact you? Yeah, um, I think everybody can Google Kevin Kim Mortgage. Um, I'm in Instagram, Facebook, and uh, website, and my business contact. But also, um, I'm in um, part of the Kakao Talk channel, uh, which you can talk to my uh, my team directly. And I'm also participating in a lot of uh, anonymous chat rooms in Kakao Talk too. I'm sure Korean people will kind of know like, oh, Kakao Talk, I know what to do because 99% right. of services dominating from them already. But uh, listeners, like, you know, just feel free to reach out. And I think um, there's a lot more potential. And um, I didn't really like about the slogan from Scotiabank that when they're saying like, oh, you're richer than you think. <laughs> and I honestly think... Yeah. Well, that's sometimes true. That's sometimes not true. But if you plan out ahead and dumping into the uh, market with a little bit more preparation, you'll see the different result. Uh, and I can guarantee um, mortgage professionals are designed and, and trained for this kind of big step. But talk to many others out there and then see who is the best. Mm -hmm. And I'm very confident that um, I can serve my specific clientele really well or better than any other else. And... Um, obviously not everybody's you know fit for my business model itself but still i would love to meet as much as possible i want to know your story i want to share my insights and i want to build up that and then make it happen so cool. looking forward to it awesome thank you so much for uh joining us today and to share everything about you know, your b lending and private experience um yeah thank you for being our very first guest thanks for having me okay take care thanks Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast 
on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.